Critical RC sent us their carbon fiber landing gear mod to try out on our RVA, and we thought it would be paired perfectly with some Fun Cub tires for a bush conversion. The combo worked great, and we found this out through some rugged flight testing, although not all our landings required the landing gear's presence. After completing the build, we went out to the Flying Eagles to do some initial testing. The Fun Cub wheel fit on the stock axle, but just barely, so we wanted to make sure the converted assembly would hold up before we took it to some more rugged locations. More on that later. Fortunately, it seemed solid and didn't change the way the plane flew. The next morning, we went to our go-to bush flying site to warm up with the Bush RV-8, starting with some torque rolls in the woods. She held up great to the initial abuse of the open tunnel teardrop out and back landings. Next up, the impossible turn approach. Well, I feel kind of stupid for this one or even thinking of it. Flying out, hovering, letting it torque roll and then lowering the nose and then coming in that way rather than having to turn around. There's no room here. So we'll try it. Here we go, man. Landed. Oh, dude! Check this out, guys. Check this out. Landing gear's fine. Can you even find... Was the impact here? I think it was on that wingtip, yeah. Dude. Well, the carbon gear held up great, man. Yeah. Sick. No damage to the tree either. And this time, I'm standing where I hit the tree, so I'll take the hit this time. All right. That is not easy. Oh, another one? Yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't want to give up. You're <laughs> gonna play the lottery after this, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, but okay, yeah, like I'm doing terribly, but look at this. I mean, that's where the impact was. Yeah, no, this isn't a bush flying video anymore. This is a crash testing video. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's definitely uh, retrievable, but damn, dude. Unfortunately, as you just saw, the impossible turn approach has yet to be tamed, but we'll come back another day to hopefully tame it. All part of the fun. Next, we traveled about an hour north to a cool park we scouted out on Google Maps. It had some sweet, unique flying spots. Before flying, we made sure to check out the Know Before You Fly app to ensure we weren't flying where we shouldn't be. We started off getting warmed up by flying off a park bench and doing some 3D around the open baseball field. No. After a few quasi-acceptable landings, I wanted to practice some ground ops. A lot of guys will do this with full scale when they're learning about forward pressure. Look at how far we could go before the prop would hit. I'm trying to like get my mind over body like comfortable with that. <laughs> Once we discovered the true scope of the additional one and a half inches of prop clearance the carbon gear gave us, we figured a good way to break in the gear would be with some firm uphill landings. The trick to these is figuring out the required power to carry into the uphill flare, since we're touching down at a high deck angle. Always remember, not every landing attempt has to be perfect. That's the fun of this. The repeated trial and error while learning new things. Thankfully, the Critical RC carbon gear absorbed the impact of the not-so-perfect landings and flexed back to neutral and good as new after each try. It took the impact forces away from the airframe so we could fly on. Next, we walked down the hill and did a few landings into the taller grass to see if the plane would flip. Spoiler alert, it didn't.
that, we went and walked around a little and found a narrow dirt road with trees on each side. We started by doing some takeoffs and landings at the top of the hill, and then began working our way down, which made for more technical approaches with narrower strips. Before leaving this area, I also got some hovering in above the bushes. Next, we began hiking the hill to scout out some spots for more uphill landings, just with more of an incline this time. gear held up super well to the abuse. Speaking of the gear, the assembly process was super easy. It comes with all the screw holes matched one to one to the stock gear for an easy swap out. Since we went with bush tires, we had to modify the RV8 axle slightly by adding a nut and some washers. This allowed the tires to be spaced properly in order to spin freely outside of the gear assembly. For those curious, the carbon fiber gear weighs 64 grams, while the stock metal gear weighs in at 83 grams. The plane ended up weighing in at two ounces lighter after the conversion was completed. Thanks to our friend Bryce of Critical RC for the new toy. Before walking back down, we saw a gap of trees with some very thick grass to use as our landing strip. So I took off and gave it a shot. That was fun. This bush mod was definitely a fun one with a good look too. While walking down the hill, we found another fun slope to do some uphill landings with. to the car, we saw one final challenging place to fly at this location. You may remember back all the way to Red Devil days where we had a hallway, a tunnel of trees. This reminds us of that a lot, so we're going to give it a shot. We wrapped up at that location and moved on to a local beach to try some water-assisted landings. This was our first time successfully doing this to a landing without flipping the plane over. Never let your bad landings dissuade you. Always push through. Nice. Yes, dude, that's the first time we've ever done that. to a bush flying machine was a blast because this is the type of flying we truly enjoy most. If you want more bush flying, give us some ideas for what you'd like to see. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll see you next time with a new upload.